Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the magnifying power of an astronomical telescope which makes the use of two convex lenses. The first one which is towards the object is known as the objective. So this is the objective lens and this has a very large aperture. The diameter of the lens is kept very large so that it can collect more amount of light so that it can form a brighter image because what you want to see with the help of the astronomical telescope is the heavenly object. So any heavenly object can be viewed but since they are very far away so that means we need to collect more light so that the brighter image can be formed that's why the larger diameter or the aperture. Now the eye is expected to be somewhere over here. So that's why this lens which is near to our human eye is known as eyepiece. Now since the object is at infinity, the rays would come parallel, parallel to themselves but not parallel to the principal axis and let me call this as the focus of the objective. So that means the rays are going to come from infinity like this and the image will be formed at the focal plane. Now one ray is enough to understand all the things very clearly. Actually this ray must pass from the optical center, slight error over here, right? You may pass n number of rays and all rays are parallel but they will definitely meet over here because the single image is formed. Now this angle is alpha. The rays which directly make the angle at the eye. Now you may imagine these lenses to be absent and directly eye to be present over here. So at the eye, these rays are going to make the angle that is alpha, right? Okay. Now, since this angle and this angle are vertically opposite angle, so this angle and this angle are the same. Let me call the name of this image as AB. Now, this is a real and inverted image. Now, since the rays are still going to continue from here and strike this lens. So for this lens, the incident rays are coming from here. So this image is going to behave as an object for this eyepiece. Okay. Now, the first case is we are going to make the final image of this at LDDV. That is the least distance of distinct vision. Now this eye is very, very close to the eyepiece, right? So this is our first case. Now this behaves as an object. Now this eyepiece can be moved in left or right direction. Now this is so adjusted over here such that the optical center and its focus lies somewhere over here. This is Fe. So now since this object lies between O and F, this lens is so adjusted that this image which behaves as an object for this lens falls between O and Fe. So that means you can straight away say that the ray going from here and there are multiple rays which are going to go like this but the final image when you extend them is formed at D. So let me make the final image here and this is the final image. For this lens, the object is at infinity. For this lens, this is the image. For this lens, this is the object. And virtual and direct image on the same side is formed because this object lies between O and F of this lens. Now, the eyepiece of course has the focal length less than that of the objective. This is being constructed in such a way. Right. Now you can, you can pull out n number of rays. They will go in this direction. They will diverge. But when you extend them backwards, you will get this as the final image. Now from the eye, this image, the final image is at least a distance of distinct vision. Now the angle beta is this angle. Okay. Let me use the another color pen. This angle is beta. Beta is the angle formed by the final image at the eye or the eyepiece center. One and the same because eye is very very close to the eyepiece. So the final image forms some angle at the optical center. That angle is beta. Now the magnifying power m is the ratio of beta to that of the alpha. 
Now, since all angles are very, very small, we have considered paraxial rays over here in our, into our consideration. So, we can also write this as 10 beta upon 10 alpha because sin alpha, 10 alpha and alpha are one and the same if angles are very, very small. Now, if I look at this triangle A, O, B, tan beta can be referred as A, B upon O, B. Now, O, B is this distance, guys. Now, this is the object distance for the eyepiece because this image behaves as an object for this lens. So, this object is at a distance of U, E, which is O, B, right? And this is exactly the focus of the objective as well. So, this is going to be U, E over here, right? This is U, E, correct? Now, in the same way, divided by 10 alpha. So, I'm going to consider A, B and let me call this as O dash. So, from this triangle, I can pull out the value of 10 alpha as A, B upon B, O dash, which is the focal length of this lens. Right. So, this is FO. So, this is nothing but FO upon UE. Now, this is one formula of the magnifying power. I am going to use the sign convention over here. In all the different formulas, you will have to use sign convention once during the derivation and second time while you will substitute the value in the numerical. Now, what am I going to do is, I am going to write the lens equation for the eyepiece. So, 1 upon Fe, that is equal to 1 upon Ve minus 1 upon Ue. Correct? Now, since this is again a new equation, so what am I going to do is, I am going to use the sign conventions again in this new equation as well as I will substitute the values. Okay? So, the focal length of the eyepiece, since it is a convex lens, so it is positive, so 1 upon Fe, the final image distance, the image distance for the eyepiece is this. So, that is D. Now, incident rays are in this direction and against the incident rays, this image will have the image distance as negative. So, that is minus D. Anyhow, this is a virtual image on the same side of the lens. 1 upon the object distance is again negative minus UE. As I said, for all new formulas, you will have to substitute the sign conventions. Now, this goes, this goes on the, the other side. So, 1 upon Fe. 1 upon Fe plus 1 upon D that is equal to 1 upon Ue, right? Now, this value I am going to substitute it over here. So, your magnifying power M becomes Fo and this minus sign I am going to take it upwards Ue, right? So, this magnifying power is equal to minus of Fo times 1 upon Ue and 1 upon Ue is 1 upon Fe plus 1 upon D. Now, just rearranging it, m is equal to, so magnifying power is equal to minus of fo, if I pull out this fe common, so it is 1 plus fe by d. This is your final formula for the magnifying power. Now, I would just want to make a point over here that why this negative sign? See, magnifying power is by how many times this angle is magnified. All right. Now, see, this angle is above the x, I mean the horizontal, so all angles are considered positive, whereas this angle is below the horizontal. So, this angle will be considered as negative. Now, compared to this alpha, this beta is larger. So, angle-wise magnification is taking, but since the angle is below the horizontal compared to the angle over here, that's why the negative sign. Or in the another sense, the object was something like this and the final image is inverted with respect to the object. That's why the negative sign appears to be over here. Now, one more point that the tube length, the tube length is the distance between the center and the center of the eyepiece and the objective. So, that means I just want to write tube length over here as O B plus, sorry, O dash B plus B O and O dash B is the focal length of the objective plus the modulus, please don't take sign conventions here, simply the distance, so that is Ue. So, this is the tube length in this case. Now, in case 2, this was the strained eye. Strained eye means the image is at the least distance of distinct vision. 
But over here, we are going to consider the second case in which the final image is at infinity. So again, the rays are going to come from infinity slant and since, since it is passing through optical center, no deviation and let me assume the image to be here at the focal plane. This point is the focus of the objective lens. So this is your objective lens and this is your eyepiece. But now this time exactly at this point you have the focus of the eyepiece as well. Now the rays coming from here will continue to move and it will hit the eyepiece. So for the eyepiece the incident rays are coming from here. So this becomes an object for this. Right. Now this is so adjusted that the object is at the focus. So that means the final image is at infinity. So the rays will be like this. Another ray will become parallel and your eye is somewhere over here. So I will feel that the image is, I mean, the rays are coming from infinity like this. So the final image for the eye is at infinity. Now in this case, again, the magnifying power, see, look, this is again alpha. This is again beta, right? Because the final image, wherever it is, its head is going to make the same angle beta. So we need not to repeat this entire derivation. So again, magnifying power is beta upon alpha. Now from here, the answer turns out to be very simple. It is same FO upon UE negative. But instead of UE, there is only one small change that I'm going to make. This object distance U for the eyepiece itself is Fe. Right? So this is Fe. That is due to the fact that the object is at the focus of the eyepiece. Right? So the final answer magnifying power is minus Fo upon Fe. Now this is for the relaxed eye case. That means the final image is at infinity. Whereas this one is for the object, sorry, the final image at least distance of distinct vision. The tube length in this case can be written as the distance from here to here, that means that is FO plus UE, but UE is FE, so that is FO plus FE. Now remember, there are some disadvantages of this astronomical telescope because these lenses are very heavy, very costly, because if you want to make the diameter very large, the size of the telescope as well as the cost will go by a very subsequent amount. Next thing, there is a defect called chromatic abrasion because when white light passes, it will definitely split up into seven different colors. It will have seven different focal length, in, focal length, so a distorted image is formed. That's why in the next topic, we will study how to remove this these, I mean, uh, difficulties by using the mirrors. That means we are going to now consider the reflecting telescope. These were refracting telescope because lenses were involved and refraction was happening.